we are here because of Christ. Lord, we stand here today because the power of the cross, because the power of an empty tomb, Lord, because of the, the power of a changed life. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Christ, who makes all that possible. And Lord, we pray that today as we uh, celebrate together uh, our common bond of, of faith, uh, our common bond of, of being a part of your family, brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, that, that you would help us to feel your presence and each other's love at the same time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May be seated. Something happened this last weekend. I don't know if you heard about it. Uh, yesterday in the snow and the colds in a location far away over by Fort Collins someplace. Uh, <laughs> there were a bunch of bears that got loose on the field uh, and won a really big game. Uh, <laughs> You know, so of course we're proud of our rifle bears uh, here as they move on to the final four. Uh, and I believe the next game is going to be played right here in rifle, which is going to be fun uh, to be able to see and, and to cheer them on to the state playoffs. Uh, that's, that's what I, uh, the ultimate game, the final, uh, that's what I hope to be able to do this Saturday. But you know, as I was, has observed the team, I've seen some differences in the Rifle Bear team than I have in some other teams. Uh, the, the team they played, I don't know a lot about the team they played this week, but the team they played last week had an outstanding passer, and he had two outstanding receivers, but they didn't fare well because the team was so conditioned on them having an outstanding game <laughs> uh, that the rest of the team didn't matter as much as just those few star players. I, I think when I look at the Rifle Bear team, I see some outstanding talent. I call Austin awesome Austin. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I see some outstanding talent, but what I see instead of just one or two or three or four, it really is a team effort. It really is a whole team working together behind a good coach to accomplish a victory. And I think about that as I think about the church. You know, in our church, we have some players, so to speak, we have some folks who are watching children doing a great job. We have some folks who are, are up on stage playing music. We have some folks who are teaching life groups. We have some folks who are teaching Bible studies during the week. We, we have some folks that are doing some really tremendous work. And I hope and pray that we're doing it all together for a common purpose in the end. Amen? Uh, as we finish out the book of Colossians, this is kind of a strange text because normally you don't preach on just a list of names at the end of the book. But I've entitled this message, Coworkers. Because I really believe that's what God has called us to be in his church. Amen? Coworkers. What's it like in today's business society? When you go to get a job, you have an interview with a boss usually, right? But oftentimes, and quite often, most often nowadays, you also have an interview with a team, don't you? They want to see if you're a good fit for their team. They want to see if you're a good fit for the co-workers that you will be working with. Uh, really, it's quite dependent on the success of any Business is quite dependent on the co-workers working together to accomplish a mission of the business, right? I mean, Starbucks has a wonderful mission statement. But if their baristas didn't cooperate together, it would be a madhouse in there, right? 
they have to cooperate together to get the job done. Well, surely if that's true in Starbucks, isn't it all so much more true in the Lord's church? And, and really, <laughs> the basis for any good business practice is found ultimately right here in God's Word, <laughs> you know? You see that if you, go, if you study businesses' practices, you'll see them rooted in principles that are found in God's Word, especially in God's church. So if you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to Colossians, the book of Colossians. And we're in the last chapter, chapter 4 of the book of Colossians. We're going to be looking at verses 7 through 18. You may be wondering a little bit about what the qualifications are uh, to be in, in such an outstanding book like the Bible. I want you to meet some folks uh, from uh, the Bible to help you understand those qualifications. All right, next up, um, King David. Thanks for coming, King David. What qualifies you to be our next small group leader? <clears throat> well, what was that word you used uh, before my name? Uh, king? Yeah, King, right. How many of those am I up against? My strengths. Uh, plagues. I'm pretty good with the staff. Can't decide who gets the last brownie? Cut it in two. Boom. Wisdom. Um, parting large bodies of water. Desert survival skills. Weaknesses. <laughs> Weaknesses. <laughs> Mountain climbing. Um, commandment retrieval. Does that look weak to you? And I can make a pretty mean goat sausage. Okay, I mean, maybe haircuts. Women. Whose isn't? <laughs> so I lied. I said my wife was my sister. They were going to kill me. <laughs> Why are we even getting into this? I'm just not sure we're comfortable with you in a leadership position. Look, it, it, Jesus Christ himself called you Satan. He was trying to make a point. Get thee behind me, Satan. I believe is the exact quote. Bathsheba. I knew you were going to go there. It was a rock to the back of the head. I really regret that it happened. And that's when you slept with the maid? My wife said she was fine with it. Abraham. What? Come on. Okay, timeline. Um, first I slept with his wife. No, 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 no. I didn't kill Christians. Then I lied to him. I was just watching people's coats. Then I had him killed, okay? They killed Christians. It's a long time ago. Besides, that was a different guy. That was Saul. <laughs> I've ever killed anyone. What? You got somebody giving you beef? Huh? You need something taken care of? Where's the app? Yo, bring it, huh? Didn't you deny Christ three times? No. Well, I'm pretty sure you did. No. Yeah, I'm almost positive. Uh, no. Okay, I did. No, I never killed anyone. Why would you even ask that question? This is the guy. Hold on, I, I mean, I do have some questions about my qualifications. I've never been to seminary. Oh, you'll do fine. I really don't have a whole lot of experience. Do you love God? Yeah. Do you want to help people? Sure. Do you have a harem? No, I don't have a harem. <laughs> All right, we're good then. Thank you. Let me, let me think about this. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> oh, 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 got her. Oh, wait a second. Look who has them. Still got the tablets. You know, a church is made up of ordinary people, just like the Bible was made up of ordinary people. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Amen? Uh, and and it's, it's no different today than it was back then. Uh, now, we read about the exploits of some of these biblical characters, and we put them up on a pedestal as if uh, they have something that we don't, when the opposite is quite true. We have something that they don't. Most of these characters were on the other side of the cross. Now we have the witness of Jesus and the, the witness of, of what he can do in a life and the understanding of being forgiven of our sins uh, because of the cross of Calvary. 
we really, in a real sense, with the Holy Spirit living in each of us, not just visiting us for a time, but living in each one of us Christians, we have something that they didn't have even. Isn't it tremendous to think about that you're a part of a team of individuals of imperfect people serving a perfect God towards a perfect purpose, fighting in a challenging game, but assured of the ultimate victory. Amen? Isn't that true? We are assured of the ultimate victory. I've read the end of the book, right? Uh, Paul describes some of his co-workers in this passage of Scripture. We're uh, in Colossians chapter 4. Would you please stand in honor of God's Word as we read it together? We're going to begin reading uh, there in uh, verse 7. Verse 7 of Colossians chapter 4. As to all my affairs, Tychius, our beloved brother and faithful servant and fellow bond slave, in the Lord will bring you information. For I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him, Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of your number, they will inform you about the whole situation here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, sends you his greetings. And also Barnabas, his cousin Mark, about whom you receive instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And also Jesus, who is called Justice, these are the only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are from the circumcision. They have proved to be an encouragement to me. Epaphras, who is one of your number, a bond slave of Jesus Christ, sends you his greetings, always laboring earnestly for you in his prayers that you may stand perfect and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a deep concern for you and for those who are in Laodicea and Heropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, sends you his greetings, and also Demas. Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and also Nephia and the church that is in her house. And when this letter is read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans. And you, on your part, read my letter that is coming from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my imprisonment. Grace be with you. Father, I pray that we would see from this listing of your disciples, Lord, how we can be a better disciple for you. Lord, I thank you that you have called us to be your disciples, that you've called us out from the world. Lord, that we may live in the world but not be of the world, that we may serve you, Lord, in a way that would please you. Lord, just help us to be the servants that you have called us to be by being better and better at being the disciples that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to take a look at, at some of these fellows that, that Paul has a little more commentary on. Uh, first of all, he says quite a bit about uh, uh, Tychius. Uh, he says he's a beloved brother uh, what that what a statement that is a beloved brother